Hello, welcome to the Kevin Stoda channel. I hope you're enjoying life from the porch here. Uh, every day I give you some lessons. I'm a teacher, a lifelong teacher, and I want to share some lessons with you. Not that we've all, all been able to internalize the lessons we've learned in life, but it's good to summarize them. And once upon a time, uh, back in the 1990s, uh, uh, David D. Burns, MD, uh, in his book, 10 Days of Self-Esteem, uh, wrote down 15 ways to untwist your thinking and they're good uh, ways to think about how you're thinking and how to get things better okay I'm gonna go through these there's 15 different ways um, and so I'll give the method and then I'll give the description for each one all right uh, 15 ways to untwist your thinking uh, method identify the distortions identify the distortions uh, write down your negative thoughts so you can see which of the cognitive distortions you're involved in. This will make it easier to think about the problem in a more positive and realistic way. I um, shared with you about um, cognitive distortions uh, that we are victims of at times uh, yesterday in a presentation. I'll go ahead and uh, let that one stand and I'll go on to the next method the straightforward approach this is a method the straightforward approach substitute a more positive and realistic thought for the what is um, wrapped you up each day one way I can do this is to pray and uh, but I don't know about you some people can meditate to reach this more positive state but replace it uh, with that also remember that this too shall pass in most cases, that's the way it is. Um, and the odds are, whatever uh, you have is not uh, and should not be the focus of your entire day. Uh, the, the next method is cost-benefit analysis. List the advantages and disadvantages of a negative feeling. <laughs> Could you imagine actually doing that? That would be helpful. List the advantages and disadvantages of a negative feeling i like getting angry when your plane is late is that going to help you <laughs> thought no matter how hard i try i always screw up if you believe that you're in trouble um it's, don't use always and uh, don't get angry about things you can't control those are cognitive distortions by the way use a cost benefit analysis be a logical person and move on uh i must always be perfect that's the uh Another one of those cognitive uh, distortions we talked about yesterday. Uh, you say, I must or I should, and then you expect to hold yourself to that 100% standard, and you may miss a lot of joy in life that way. So, um, evaluate that uh, as in a cost benefit analysis. Um, another problem one might have. Uh, you can use the same cost benefit analysis for is uh, the behaviors like overeating and lying around in a bed when depressed okay um, look at it is if you're overeating and lying around in bed when depressed is that going to really help you and how long will it help you <laughs> if it does um, analyze it what could you be doing with that rest of that day even if you make a list or something to help you get out of that so you've at least done uh, three things before the end of the day would be great rather than laying around the bed or, or eating okay the fourth uh, method would be uh, examine the evidence examine the evidence instead of assuming that a negative thought is true examine the actual evidence for it for example if you think that you never do anything right you could list several things that you have done successfully yeah, that's what's got me through the years. I was a little bit more depressed early on in life and compare myself to others, but um, I was just, in the end, was able to travel to 102 countries before 45 years of age when I got married to my wife. I may have been sad at times because I wasn't married, but I was able to travel and, and really experience a lot of different places a lot of people don't. And uh, especially in this time of coronavirus, there's you know restricted so I've been blessed and so um, examine evidence has your life been 
depressing? Have you been down most of the time? Uh, if you survey your life, you think back and how much you did accomplish. Don't just weigh the, uh, the bad. Weigh in the good. Be fair. Be honest. Is your, are your thoughts realistic about your life, present, past, and future? I think uh, when I was first had chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, I was only 25 years old, and there was no diagnosis, and that would take a decade or more. And I would have had short-term analysis. But now that I'm in my 50s, of course, I can survey the history a little differently. Please um, teach your children well that they can survey, survey their history differently and, and uh, you know, do one new thing at a time each day or each year, whatever pace they can get on and uh, grow. Uh, the next method, uh, I think we're down to number seven, is the experimental method. Do an experiment to test the accuracy of your negative thought. Like if you say something, I always do this, I always do that. Why don't you look back? Were there times where you didn't? Was it accurate? Were there also times when something happened differently than you have attributed it to? So be really um, scientific about it. Don't just go with that negative thought that says you always do this or you must do that always. And anyway, number eight, uh, double standard. Uh, the double standard technique. Talk to yourself in the same compassionate way you might talk to a dear friend who was upset instead of putting yourself down. Be nice. Yeah. Uh, again, yesterday I talked in a different presentation about um, how you can show empathy and show that for yourself. Be empathetic for yourself too, not just empathetic to others. Uh, don't have a double standard. Uh, the ninth way of uh, untwisting your thinking is the pleasure predicting method. The pleasure predicting method. Predict how satisfying activities will be from zero to 100%. Record how satisfying they turn out to be. Wow. Say that again. Predict how satisfying activities will be from zero to 100%. Record how satisfying they turn out to be. Hmm, that's something I should try with my daughter. <laughs> Young kids aren't, aren't always interested in trying something new. But maybe you can say, how much do you think you'll like this activity? 10%, 10 you know, on a 10 point scale. And then. Maybe ask them later and you discover, hey, it was, it was better than I thought. And that's good. It's motivating to keep trying new things. The pleasure predicting method. Number 10 of the 15 ways to untwist your thinking is the vertical arrow technique. Uh, draw a vertical arrow under your negative thought. Draw the arrow under your thought and ask why it would be upsetting if it was true. Hmm. So imagine the worst. Uh, imagine in this COVID-19 air that you're gonna be out of work, out of a job, and you imagine the worst. It could be for a long time. What are you gonna do with that time? So uh, imagine if it is true, was true, what can you do? Just be worried all the time? Or is there something that you can do to take the bull by the horns and, and or piece by piece, you make a list uh, and start following it? Can you set aside time to help people, to volunteer? My sister's been unemployed for over half a year and she's doing a good job of, of volunteering with different organizations at least once a week, if not more. Um, I'm gonna try to do that this summer. Uh, another way or method of the 15 ways to untwist your thinking is define your terms. Define the terms. When you believe or label yourself as inferior or a loser, ask yourself, what do you mean by these labels? You may be surprised when you discover that there is no such thing. You may be surprised when you discover there is no such thing. 
Okay, when you label yourself as inferior or loser, ask yourself what you mean by these labels. You may be surprised when you discover there's no such thing. Okay, there's no real good definition for inferior. The inferior is just a, a comparison of yourself to others. But is it even a fair comparison? Um, you know, we say people are inferior beings. You know that God created all men equally, and uh, how they're treated is a different story. But inferior, no. A loser? A loser. Hmm, what's a loser? A loser is somebody who always gives up, I guess. I don't know. A loser is... I don't know, but if he always gives up, at least he tries new things. Come on, think about it. Maybe there's no such things. Uh, another way to untwist your thinking. Be specific. Stick with reality and avoid judgments about reality. Stick with reality and avoid judgments about reality. Be specific. Hmm. Now, some people can be quite anal when they... <laughs> carry this out but in a way you need to stop giving up on things and uh, stick it out and find out how far you can go with this reality for example uh, when I learnt, learnt foreign languages I would put myself uh, in a living situation often in another country and immerse myself in it and I would stick to it all day long so stick with reality and avoid judgments about the reality. You know, I could be thinking, oh, my, my German is so bad or my Spanish is so horrible. But at least you're trying. And uh, maybe before long, you'll start dreaming a language, even if it is wrong. But maybe not. Maybe those dreams will be more correct and you'll get up the next morning and be able to do remember more than you thought you could. Um, so be specific, stick with reality, and avoid judgments about the reality, like your achievements. The semantic method is another method uh, to untwist your thinking. Substitute language that is less emotionally loaded. This method is helpful for should statements. Instead of telling yourself, I shouldn't have made that mistake, you can say, it would be better if I hadn't made that mistake. Oh, that's a nice way. If it would be better if I hadn't made that mistake. Hmm. That is a little bit better. Okay. If I hadn't made the mistake. I mean, you could go ahead and admit, if I hadn't made the mistake, this wouldn't have happened. Okay. Um, but you shouldn't have this, I shouldn't, I should always be perfect and not make mistakes. That's unfair. So get rid of that and say, I made a mistake. If I had done this, this probably wouldn't have been a mistake. Maybe I was forced with two bad choices, but in any case, I tried my best. All right, use the if statement, the semantic method. Um, the next to last uh, way to untwist your thinking would be reattribution. Reattribution, instead of blaming yourself for a problem, think about all the factors that may have contributed to it. Again, did you have a choice or only bad choices at the time? Or did no one even help you present, you know, despite you're asking around uh, a possible solution at the time? Uh, there's just no way you would have come up with it on your own, uh, did you ask. But instead of blaming yourself for a problem, think about all the factors that have contributed to it. Why was it particularly hard? Why didn't you know of that solution? Why wasn't you able to come up with that solution. Focus on solving the problem instead of using all your energy, blaming yourself and feeling guilty for not having done something, okay? But you can learn from it, but what, instead of blaming yourself, think about the factors that have contributed to it, okay? Uh, there's so many societal factors that I have been unable to control all my life. Like, why do uh, only a handful of people control the contracts for paving roads? Why am I not one of them? Why didn't God make me one of them? Or why don't I have a, 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 a PhD? Or I could be uh, blaming myself for it or just let it go to the circumstance, social circumstances at universities for somebody going back to college at the age or university graduate school at the age of 39 and how difficult that is in uh, America even these days. Um, Finally, the acceptance of paradox. The acceptance of paradox. We need it. 
Instead of defending yourself against your own self-criticism all the time, find truth in them and accept them. So accept some of your crit criticism of yourself. You can learn from them. Okay, so this is a little bit, uh, I think we've gone 360 degrees here. You can go ahead and accept some of your criticism. Uh, you can learn from it and you can pray about it, uh, change your heart. We can't all change our heart, it doesn't happen one day, but maybe we can um, have a good heart as a goal. And breathe, okay? We know that that's the goal, we know we've uh, flubbed up, what can we do? So I'll go ahead and summarize again the 15 ways to twist your thinking. I suggest you try out these methods. Method number one is identify the, the distortions. Number two, uh, straighten the straightforward approach. Substitute a more positive and realistic thought for the ones you're having. Number three, the cost-benefit analysis. List the advantages and disadvantages of negative feelings. Number four, examine the evidence. Instead of assuming the negative thought is true, investigate. Number five, the survey method. Uh, do a survey to find out if your thoughts and attitudes are even realistic. You might be other, uh, find other people who can clarify this for you too. Uh, number six, number six is the experimental method. Uh, do an experiment to test the accuracy of a negative thought. Um, next one, uh, the double standard technique. Uh, talk to yourself in the same compassionate way you might like to talk to others. All right. Um, the next one is the pleasure predicting method. Predict how satisfying activities will be from zero to a hundred. Okay, don't just say it's impossible or there's no way you can enjoy it. You predict, okay, that there's maybe a 10%, 20% chance and you try it and you find out what's up. Uh, next, uh, draw a vertical arrow technique. Draw a vertical arrow on your negative thought. Can you send it the other way asking why it would be upsetting if it was true, okay? Then, you know, bounce the thought back. Uh, that's a vertical arrow technique. Next one, thinking in shades of gray. Instead of thinking about your problems in black or white categories, evaluate things in shades of gray, okay? Um, number 11, define terms. When, you're label, when you label yourself as inferior or a loser or somebody else as a donkey, Ask yourself what you mean by these labels, okay? You may be just frustrated. It's not really a reality. Uh, be specific, uh, number 12. Uh, stick with reality and avoid judgment about reality. I don't think you can do all these at the same time, but it's good to have a list. Uh, number 13, the semantic method. Substitute language that is less emotionally loaded. This means uh, method is helpful. Instead of using should statements, uh, you say if. If I had done this differently, maybe this would have happened. But use that as an analysis instead of saying I should have done it. Could be there was many choices and you had to make one and the time was short and you were bound to make it. Uh, make a bad one under the pressure. Or you weren't didn't have enough information to make the correct decision. So in any case, just say if. Uh, number 14, reattribution. Instead of blaming yourself for a problem, think about all the factors that have contributed to it. Mm -hmm. It's related to the last one. Uh, the acceptance paradox. Instead of defending yourself against your own self-criticism all the time, find truth in them and accept them. Again, we've come full circle. There are some pieces in the reality that may be true. You've looked at it, you've evaluated things and you accept that that is the case, um, that you could be better and change is welcome. Uh, how that go, comes about to be the case is not the same as accepting them. Okay, you don't have to accept your condition forever. You can still look for change, you can pray for change, you can ask for help in working towards change and um, and following these other ways to twist your thinking to make yourself better and analyze yourself better instead of letting the winds of pain or stress uh, this uh, COVID-19 and high un unemployment time in American history. 
try to uh, accept uh, what you can change and to change what you are able as you can. And don't use the word should. Okay, if I can, I will. All right, take care. Uh, this is Kevin Stoda from The Porch, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.